This is The Pet Show with America's favorite pet expert, Warren Eckstein. Warren's the author of How to Get Your Dog to Do What You Want, How to Get Your Cat to Do What You Want, and he's here to answer all your pet and animal questions. Now, say hello to Warren Eckstein. Is your rescued Shih Tzu acting a little shy? Does your calico kitten need to chill out a bit? Are you being bullied by your beagles? Well, if you love animals, obviously you do, care about wildlife and the environment, and want to really, really understand how your dogs and cats thinking and why they behave some of the strange ways they do, stay tuned because once again, right here, right now, it is time for the Pet Show. That's right, America's first and only real pet psychology, training, behavior, and of course, pet lifestyle show because we love them so much. So hop up on my couch. Ah, uh, bring those cute little buddies with you folks because it is that time once again to let the animal analyzing begin. Hey, good morning everybody. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is the Pet Show, the place where we absolutely positively never a doubt about it, love, adore, and as I stress every single week, respect pets and animals as much as you do. By the way, if you'd like to join me on the Evergrowing Pet Show family, if you want to find out why your dogs are behaving the way they do, they're reacting a little different since you've been quarantined, your cat stopped using the litter box, your dog decided to jump on everybody, dig holes in the backyard, you get the idea. If you have a question about your pet's behavior, great time to give me a call. And let me just remind everybody once again, besides answering all of your pet and animal questions, a few years experience behind me, by the way, folks, everyone that calls into the show today and does get through to me live on the air will, in fact, be getting an incredible gift thanks to my super, super sponsors. Many have been with me for 20 years. Many of the gifts I'll be giving away, I'll give a list a little later, are 25 35 40 bucks, and even more. So it's a great time to give me a call. I'll answer your questions. I'd like to find out how you guys are doing with quarantine as well. And at the same time, a great gift will be on its way for you. Well, not really for you, but for your dog or cat. The phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA. That's 866-870-KRLA. Or if you're more a numbers person, that's 866-870-5752-866-870-5752. Fifty-two. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your questions. Lots of great stuff to give away. Let me tell you what I do have planned for today's show. However, by now, when I say this every week, I come up with topics that are interesting for you. But of course, your questions, your comments are always my priority. So we'll try to get to as many of the topics as I can. But if I don't get to them, I'll share them with you during the week on Facebook or Instagram or some other type of social media. But here's what I'd like to, to focus on today. Can we finally, I mean finally, remove the word punishment from the vocabulary of those involved with training and behavior? Now, using punishment on a distressed dog is very, very bad and, in my opinion, abusive. This can make the dog even more, more distressed. So I say get rid of the word punishment, and I'll teach you some other words to come up later on. If you agree, agree, disagree with me, give me a call. Let me know. That's what this show is all about. We share ideas. Is it okay to punish a dog or punish a cat? Give me a call. Let me know. 866-870-KRLA. 866-870-5752. Also coming up on today's show, I was going to talk about this last week, but I ran out of time. What a shock. Don't brush off your cat's dandruff. Don't brush off your cat's dandruff. There are many causes and treatments. If you have a cat, stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this story. And if you believe your dog is, in fact, a juvenile delinquent, he or she is just a teenager. Remember your rebellious teenage years, acne and all? Be more patient with your teenage dog. We'll talk about that coming up later. And the question is, so many questions today. Can chihuahuas swim? 
See, this is the stuff that keeps me up at night. You may be thinking about not being able to go out, what you need from the store. I think about whether or not Chihuahuas are good swimmers. I'll have the answer coming up. And some very interesting new mixed breeds of dogs. I hate to use that, but some, some breeds. We'll have a little fun with it. It's not real serious, but we'll have some fun with some of those breeds as well. One of them really got to me is, is what, would you, what would you call a cross? I don't want anyone saying it, but what would you cross between a, a bulldog and a shih tzu? Hold it to yourself, folks. Please hold it to yourself. Plenty of time for your questions and comments. Lots of great pet items to give away. So, if your pet is jumping, humping, digging, scratching, barking, not using a litter box, not eating, eating way too much, surfing your countertops, your dog despises other dogs and some people, your poor pup is suffering with separation anxiety, your dachshund's depressed, they keep you up at night, or you just finally realize, hey, you know what? My dogs, my cats, a little bit brighter than I am. Great time to give me a call, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Also coming up a little bit later, you know, I've been right on top of this uh, COVID-19 for our pets, and I'm going to share some updates with you a little bit later on the show. A lot of calls this week, a lot of emails this week. Warren, can I, can I catch COVID if I pet my dog, or what should I do if, if my dog's been around? We're going to answer all those questions coming up a little bit later. And here's my question of the day. I have two, okay? Number one is, do you believe in punishment for dogs or cats for that matter? Do you believe in punishment for animals? Give me a call. Let me know. I'll send you guys a super gift. But also, I posted this on Facebook just this morning. The response has kind of been interesting. Here's the question. Would you let your spouse drink black coffee if you were out of milk? but run to the store if your pet needed treats. Would you let your spouse drink black coffee if you were out of milk, but would you run to the store if your pet needed a treat? Give me a call. Let me know. Plenty of time for your questions and comments. As I said, lots of great stuff to give away. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. I'm not sure, Alex, my, my engineer, but I think this is like the... 15th or 16th week that I've been broadcasting from my home studio. Not a tough place to be in beautiful downtown Santa Monica. So I am broadcasting from home, which is is kind of interesting. I mean, I much prefer to be in a studio with Alex and and Suzette and all the people there. But I don't have I don't have Willie and Molly with me at the studio. So it's kind of it's kind of a toss. But I hate to tell you this, Suzette and, and Alex, but I'd rather be with Molly and Willie. Even though I love you guys, I'd rather be with Molly and Willie. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Plenty of time for your calls. As I said, lots of super stuff to give away. I'll give you a list in just a little bit. Also, if you want to check out, you know, you can hear me on radio stations on KRLA, obviously, and and, uh, I are in many different places. But if you want to actually watch the show as I'm doing it, I don't know, but if you can, check it out. We're doing live on Facebook. It's simply facebook.com slash the pet show facebook.com slash the pet show and i know it's hard to get to on the phone sometimes so i'll kind of take a look at the uh, the facebook posts as well and see if in fact some questions come through we had a lot last week and i'll try to answer some questions off of facebook so facebook.com slash the pet show or you can give me a call at 866-870-KRLA 866-870-5752 Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. How about we start out with a call today, and we are going to go to my friend Don in Rolling Hills. Hey, Don, welcome to the Pet Show. Thank you, Warren, for taking our call. I'm here with uh, two of my great-grandchildren. Uh, one is five years old, Olin, and the other is... is uh, are you talking about Are you talking about people, ch- people grandchildren, or daughters? They are of a Coney Coney uh, a baby pig that's 10 weeks old and needs training and one of her problems is that she nibbles on toes and the other problem is she needs to be potty trained and i'd like to ask you if you could please help us with how we should train uh, a baby pig and and olin here is going to tell you the name of the pig i'm ready what's the name of your pig winky 
His name is Winky. Oh, Winky, what a great name. You know, I have two pet pigs of my own, Spotty and, uh, why am I going blank on the other one, and Corky, uh, but they weren't little pigs. Spotty was 1,100 pounds and Corky was 900 pounds, and they were both totally housebroken. It was great and fine and dandy, except that they got so heavy, I couldn't bring them in the house anymore because they would crush the floors. Pigs are incredibly smart, perhaps one of the smartest and most emotional animals you can live with. The most important thing you need to do is socialize the pig as much as possible and what you also need to understand is with a pig is if you correct them they're going to become because they're so sensitive it may really inhibit them in the future so what you need to do when you're working or training a pig is use distraction therapy now this is a baby pig but my pigs were so big that no matter what toy I gave them they would destroy immediately so I would go to bowling alleys and I get old used bowling balls and I put the bowling balls in with them and they would just push the bowling balls around. So keeping them mentally stimulated is really important. And actually having your grandkids read to the pig, not only will it give them a bonding situation, but it's good for the kids and good for the pig. Now in terms of, of, of housebreaking, Pigs are generally very, very clean animals. But when they're young, you need to really watch them with a hawk eye. And usually there's some indication before they go. That's at the point where you bring them outside, let them finish what they're doing, and you just sing them a song and praise them however long you have to. Now, in terms of nibbling on toes, pigs are rooters. That's what they do. That's why they use them for, for sniffing out truffles all the time. So what I would do with my pigs is to kind of get that out of their system is in the yard, you can put a, like a, a kiddie pool, fill it with dirt, fill it with sand, bury stuff in there so the pig can go in there and do its natural kind of burrowing the way it would do. And in terms of the chewing on the nails, rather than overreacting to it, because if you overreact to it, pigs are incredibly bright. They'll say, well, you you know what? I may not be getting positive attention for chewing on the toes, but I'll be getting some attention for chewing on the toes, so therefore I'm going to chew on them. Next time the pig starts to nibble on toes, get up and walk away. If he realizes he's not getting any attention one way or the other, the nibbling will stop. But just make sure, and this is critical, I know I'm going on in this because I love pigs. Make sure you give them a tremendous amount of mental stimulation. Maybe I need to write another book, uh, a dime called How to Get Your Pig to Do What You Want. I don't know. Thank you very much for your wonderful advice. That great out of how old did you say your kids uh, the kids were? The great grandkids are five and uh, almost three. Five and they and... love they love uh, Winky, and Winky loves them. It, Winky's extremely. Uh, it's, just, it's like a, a lovable puppy. Ah, pay, people have no real. Are, listen, in many respects, it's like a dog. Pig, different than a dog. Pigs are even more emotional than dogs. Make quick story, and then I'll move on to everybody else. The bottom line is, when I rescued my pig Corky, at that point I was traveling all over the country doing a lot of TV for the Today Show and other shows that I was involved with. And if I came back, and I had a, I had a little. Uh, a sanctuary in upstate New York, a little town called Cobleskill. If I came back home after a trip and I did not have a gift for Corky, she would go absolutely berserk. So no matter what city I went to, I always had to find a 3 or 4X t-shirt with the name of that city. I'll never forget the one that said Rochester on it. And I had to bring a t-shirt home for my pig whenever I traveled just to keep her happy. Anyway, listen, now Don, don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you on hold. I'm trying to think what to send you. I have no pig pig toys or pig treats or whatever. Uh, you know what? I'm going to send you a t-shirt that says none of my friends walk upright, and I appreciate that phone call. Uh, great time to give me a call. Lots of great stuff to give away. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Always like to start off the pet show with a pig question. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. A quick break, then right back to your phone calls. You know, every single day, I get Get more and more texts and emails and calls to my office from listeners thanking me for letting them know about Nature Vet's hemp seed oil because not all hemp seed oil is the same. Nature Vet makes the best hemp seed oil that's available for your pets. They have five different brands available, not brands but types. They have hemp seed calming oil, which actually helps with upset stomachs and easing your dog's cat's digestion. There's hemp seed joint health, which is fabulous. Glucosamine, MS. M, vitamin E, vitamin C, chondroitin, and yucca. 
hemp seed immune health, hemp seed allergy aid, and one of my favorites, I give it to my guys every day, is their hemp seed oil with krill and salmon. We know how important that is. Uh, they're made by Nature Vet right here in beautiful Temecula, California. I know what happens. You go to the pet store, you go online, and everyone's making hemp seed oil now. Well, let me tell you, not all hemp seed oil is the same. Take it from someone who's been using hemp seed oil for many years. So when you go to the pet store and you're looking for hemp seed oil, make sure that label says Nature Vet made right here in Temecula. Nature Vet, that's the one I recommend. That's the one I endorse. That's the one I use for my own pet. So check out Nature Vet products. They're available in all your big chain stores, your small chain stores. And they're also available now because they're so fabulous at my website. So check out Nature Vet Hemp Seed Products at thepetshow.com, thepetshow.com, <clears throat> or naturevet.com. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is The Pet Show. And we are back on The Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. Great time to call me, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. If you're not near a radio, you have friends that may be uh, away. They can always watch and listen to the show right now. I'm broadcasting live as well at Facebook. All I need to do is, is log on to Facebook.com slash The Pet Show, Facebook.com slash The Pet Show. Or if you want to give me a call or have them give me a call, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Uh, we have Janet in Lake Balboa. We have Robin and Marina Del Rey, Christy in Lakewood, David and Whittier, James and Yorba Linda. I'm going to get to everyone's calls today. I'm going to focus on your calls. And right now, it's time to go to Robin. Hey, Robin, welcome to the Pet Show. Hi, Warren. I love your show. Well, thank you. Uh, my dog loves to chew bully sticks, and I've found that it chips or cracks their teeth. So what can I do? If do, you, do, you know, do you know what bully sticks are? I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A lot of people have no idea what they are, but basically it's, it's bull penises. Um, yeah. That's what they make the bully sticks out of. Um, if you find, and there are certain dogs, what kind of dog do you have? A cockapoo. A cockapoo, and when he's chewing on him, it's breaking his teeth. Well, and they say when I go in to take her for her teeth cleaned, he has, she has some cracked teeth. So I don't know. Is it okay? She loves bully sticks, but is it okay to let her chew them? Not okay to let her chew them. She's cracking her teeth. Sooner or later, cracked teeth can you know be, cause a bigger problem. I would try yeah. some of the other things on the market. I, you know, there's a lot of rawhide on the market, but here's the problem with rawhide: is a lot of rawhide is made in South America. A lot of rawhide comes from the 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 east. And lots of times that rawhide is made from water buffalo, which is very high in fat content and often has chemicals in it. So if you're going to be use rawhide, which is a little bit softer maybe than the bully sticks, you might want to use rawhide that's specifically made in the United States. Uh, that would be the best approach. But in terms of the bully sticks, it just makes common sense. If, in fact, the bully sticks are cracking your dog's teeth, then you got to get them off the bully sticks. It's that simple. So the rawhide would be better then? Yeah, rawhide's a little bit softer. Uh, you might want to try some... Uh, uh, deer antlers. Have you tried the deer antlers? Are they, you know what? No, I'm not, I now let me, let me go back on that because they can be a little hard too. So they they might be the same way. Uh, do you clean your dog's teeth on a regular basis? Yes. Okay, well, that's good because if you know if he's not going to be chewing, cleaning is important as well. So what I would do is I would get off the bully sticks, try some of the rawhide. Just make sure if you notice the rawhide splintering, you throw it away and give them a fresh piece. And also understand the only time that I recommend rawhide for your dog is when you're home to watch her. A question, another quick question. Why does my dog have, have to have something in her mouth all the time? Tennis balls or toys or anything all the time. A dog's mouth is like a human's hands. And when you think of a young child, they always got to grab this or hold this. It's a sign of security. So when a dog has something in his mouth, whether it be a tennis ball, a Frisbee, your hand, whatever, it's a sign of making them feel more confident. So it's nothing to worry about. It's just a way of your dog. It's kind of like your dog having a glass of wine, okay? When he has that ball in his mouth or that toy in his mouth, it's just going to make him feel a little bit calmer, less stressed, and more at ease. All right. Thank you very much. That's Don't go anywhere. Off. I'm trying to think of what I want to send you. What do I want to send you? You're a nice lady, Robin. What am I going to send Robin and Marina Del Rey? You know what? I'm going to put you on hold, and I am going to send you. I am going to send some hemp seed oil for joint health on its way to you, and I appreciate that phone call, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Can we remove 
Can we please remove the word punishment from the vocabulary of those involved with training and behavior? Using punishment on a distressed dog is really, really bad. In my opinion, it's abusive and can make the dog even more distressed. I saw published uh, advice this week from, from a trainer suggesting that if the dog is not behaving the way you want to behave him, just like a child, you need to punish the dog. I'd like to get five minutes with that trainer and punish him. Educate, not punishment. I'd like to get your opinion. Do you believe punishment works or educating is a better approach? Give me a call. Let me know. Send you a great gift. 866-870-KRLA. 866-870-5752. Hey, Christy in Lakewood, welcome to the Pet Show. Hi, how are you? I'm doing super. How about yourself, Christy? Pretty good, thanks. I had actually, a, it's kind of a, a double question. So I have a puppy. She just turned a year old. And we have a back door um, that whenever anyone comes through that back door, it causes her anxiety. Like she can't see whoever it is. And it causes her to bark and run toward me. So I'm so, trying to figure out how do I correct that behavior. Yeah, it's a, um, it's, a, it's a piece of cake. Here's what you need to do. It's okay. You need to take five or ten minutes a few times a week or even 15 minutes. You need to leave that back door open. She can be in another room with you. And at that back door is either someone she knows or someone has her toy. And when that back door rings or the doorbell knocks, she goes back there. The door's already open, so there's nothing to be fearful of. She sees the person there. That person knows her name, rewards her, and you will find after a few times she will no longer be fearful of that back door. Okay, awesome. Okay, great. That sounds easy enough. That, that's my job to make it, because if I make it hard for you, you're not going to do it, Chris. i got to make it as easy as I possibly can. <laughs> that's awesome. The next problem I have is, she is she because uh, I'm mom, she enjoys jumping on me and biting me um, to show her affection. Um, and it, it actually, it hurts. So I'm trying to, you know, we've worked on, and we've gone through all the pet care training, but we can't get her to uh, not show me so much affection, even humping now, if she's escalated. So, um... Wait, wait, they, they, they want it. Wait, wait, did someone tell you not to show the dog so much affection? Well, it, it, they were like, well, use the ignore because she keeps doing it because she wants your attention from it. Okay, so they're telling you to ignore it or are they telling you to correct the dog at that point? They, well, they told me to tell her to get down and if she doesn't, then turn to ignore. Okay. First of all, telling her to get down is not the response at that point. What I would do is the ignoring part is great, walk away. Then what I would do is get the leash and harness on the dog and establish some good positive authority. Five minutes at the most, but just reestablish some positive authority. By telling the dog get down and walking away, you're not teaching the dog anything. Okay, by walking away, we're not giving her the attention for being uh, doing something we don't want her to do. But then we have to let her know what we do want her to do. We don't want it to end on a negative. We want to put that leash in yeah. harness. And if you've done your training properly, what she's going to be hearing over and over again is good girl, good boy. What a great job you did while you're doing the training. That's the way to approach it. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. What's the dog's name, Christy? Her name's Heaven. What was it? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Heaven. Kevin, what a great name for yeah. Kevin. Yeah. I right, listen, don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you on hold, and I am going to see you got a year old dog, right? Why don't we keep that dog as healthy as we possibly can for the next 50 years? So what I'm going to do is I'm changing your food. I am going to send you some Lucy Pet Formas Life pet food. Yes, that is the food I feed my own Molly and Willie. And no one loves their dogs more than, than I love Molly. Well, well, maybe you do. So some, uh, some Lucy Pet Food on its way to you, and I really appreciate that phone call. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Let me tell you what I'm giving away on today's show. You heard me say many of the items I give away are $25, $35, $40 and more. Hey, folks, that's not an exaggeration. On today's show, if you call in and get through to me, I will be giving away my own Hugs and Kisses Vitamin Mineral Supplement Treats. I'll be giving away Lucy Pet Food. You just heard me give away some Lucy Pet Food a minute ago. Those amazing t-shirts that say, none of my friends walk upright. I'll also be giving away copies of my behavior book, either how to get your dog to do what you want, how to get your cat to do what you want. Also, some Cat's Incredible Cat Litter, Author Suit Gold, Mushroom Max, Hemp Seed Oil, 
plenty of time for your calls, lots of great stuff to give away. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. A quick break, then right back to your calls. I'm Warren Eckstein. Yeah, you're listening to The Pet Show. And we're back on The Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. I see that someone uh, wrote me a note on Facebook. Can, uh, can dogs carry the coronavirus? Um, here's here's the, the latest from the uh, um, uh, Center for Disease, Disease Control. Uh, infected pets might get sick or they might not have any symptoms. One, uh, of the pets that have gotten sick, most only had mild illnesses and recovered. But the question was, uh, can dogs carry? There is no evidence that the virus can spread to people from the skin, fur, or hair of pets. Do not wipe or bathe your pet with any chemical. I can't believe someone wrote me a letter this week. Can I bathe my dog with a disinfectant? Can I rub my cat with disinfectant? Listen carefully. Do not, do not wipe your pet with chemical disinfectants, alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, or any other product that's not specifically approved for animal use. So there's been a couple of animals that have gotten sick from people, uh, but in terms of what they're saying at this point, uh, the chances are, are very limited. And, and the coronavirus that a dog gets or a cat gets is a different coronavirus than we get. We'll talk more about that. I'm going to do a, I'm thinking about doing a Zoom. Uh, I've never done a Zoom before, but I'm thinking about doing a Zoom on that. And if so, we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted on that. Man, the phones are jam-packed. Let me go back to the phones, and let's go to David in Whittier. Hey, David, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm calling back. You, you asked for the results of my dog last week I called. Yeah, what, what, he what was were not, he, he was not uh, He was not being alert. Okay. It was like his personality, his personality changed. Yeah. But anyway, they took blood and a urine test, and everything was good there, so they putting him on another diet. I mean, you know, they're, they're having him to eat something else. What, what, refresh so anyway, me. What, what was the question? What was the question you asked me last week? Last week, I called you because my dog, his personality changed. He wouldn't oh. come. I would have to pick him, up, pick him up to take him outside. Okay, so his personality changed. You took him to the vet. They did a blood test, and they said that everything looks normal in the blood test, and they're changing the food because? Uh, just for uh, supplements he needs. Well, why didn't they what recommend the supplement? Why are they changing the food and not just recommending a supplement of what the dog may be lacking? Uh huh. They yeah, they said to get some Royal can- Cannon. Yeah. Where did, did they tell you where to buy it? They told you to buy it at a store, right? Well, they bought tried to get it there yesterday, and they said they need a prescription. I don't. Okay, know, so, I don't. I never heard of that. Well, no, there is some food. However, so in other words, the vet, for whatever reason, he sells the food at his location. Yes, makes and sense. They get it on Chewy's. Chewy's. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, they, they sell. They sell. Oh, so. Here's the bottom line. Yeah, follow your vet's advice if you want. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, there's not a better food or a healthier food on the market than Lucy Pet Food. But if your vet wants Correct. him on that, then whatever your vet wants to put him on, put him on. Let me be honest with you. It's very, very rare that a change of food is going to change behavior. I mean, if there's a physiological right. reason. So I don't understand the concept of just changing the food without the vet recommending some behavioral advice and behavioral work and some analyzing uh-huh. to figure out what the problem is. That's number one. So my question to you, again, is the same as it was last week. You got a clean bill of health from the vet. That's fine and dandy, but your dog is still reacting the same way, correct? Right. He's, he's not shivering like he was. He was trembling a lot, but now he's calmed down with that part. But like I said, he still doesn't like a, you know like a treat. He wants me to bring it to him. What did I? Um, what did I? I, I what I, what I did I? What did I send you for the dog last week? You sent me. A, I'm pretty sure it was the hemp seed oil. Okay, yeah, I was just going to recommend it's exactly what I would have sent you if I didn't send you the hemp seed oil. You, I'm sure you didn't get it yet. When you get the hemp yet, seed oil. Yeah, it, takes, you know, it could take six weeks, five weeks, you know, especially with the COVID. Right. Um, what I would do at this point is I would, um, I would absolutely spend more time really down at the level of the dog. The more time you spend down at that level, whatever's causing him, they checked him for pain. He could move his legs. He, he lifted his legs. He moved them all around. There was no problems like that. Right. He's okay. I mean, he could run, but it, okay. like I said, he just lays around unless I pick him up. To take outside, take him outside and do his mess, and but I have to pick him up to bring him back in, and he runs to his water. And that, that never that that just started recently. That never was the way it was before. Right. Uh huh. Remember, he was trembling uh, a while back. I told you he was in a tow truck, and that's when he started trembling. But everything yeah. was okay for over a year now, over a couple of years. Is he okay? But he's okay in a car now. 
Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Okay. The only thing I can do at this point, I wish I could come to your home and I wish I could resolve this. This is what I used to do. This was my job years ago to take on the dogs that, that no one else would take on. What I would do in uh -huh. your case, number one, is to try to reassure, I'm sure you're doing it, spending as much time on the floor right. with the dog as possible, both outside and inside the house. That's number uh -huh. one. I mean, does he seem happy? Can you put him on a leash and take him for a walk? Um, yes. Take him to yeah, different he, he, places. He's jumping into the car now. David, again, take him take him to different places. Take him to a right. lot of different places, a different park, a different oh. beach, a friend's house. I think the more exposure he gets away from his home. I don't know what caused the reaction. It may have been something that happened in the home after the tow truck ride. But that's what you need to do right now. I would definitely recommend that you start taking to a lot of different locations. Always end on a positive note. And give me a call back in a few weeks. I'll try to go further with you. But this is a, a tough one uh, based on the fact that the vet's saying that there's absolutely nothing wrong physically with the dog. I'm sure he did a thyroid test. I'm sure he did other tests with the dog. Did he do a blood test? He was, uh, I just, yes, blood and urine. Uh -huh. Thyroid, the good. thyroid, the thyroid was fine. I couldn't tell you about thyroid, but just the blood and urine, I know they took. Well, no, but they would test, I would, I would speak to the vet about the thyroid. I'll tell you, I've seen changes in behavior really reacting uh -huh. to a change in thyroid condition. I would check with the vet on that, but follow my advice. Give me a call back in a few weeks, David. If I have to, I'll try to go further with you, okay? What, what, one more thing real quick. Go ahead. Once, you, once, once I get the hemp seed oil, that has, that has salmon oil in it, right? Well, so I don't know which one I sent you, but the hemp seed with krill, yeah. Okay, because I'm giving them salmon oil every meal. Should I stop that? Well, once you, once you stop, once you, yeah, once you get the krill with the salmon, yeah, I don't want to give them too much. Once you get the krill with the salmon, use that instead of just the big, plain salmon at this point. Okay, and David, I'm going to get Lucy's dog food. That, well, the, yeah, well, but the vet wants you on that other food. I don't know why he put you on that other food. It's not. A, I don't believe it's. A, it's. A, I don't believe it's a, a prescription diet. And why uh, do you need a prescription from? I, I never heard. Of and I mean, why do you? you know, well, no, there are there are prescriptions, but why do you need a prescription from the vet when you don't need a prescription exactly. on Chewy? And he, right, and, I, and he's the one that said to buy it there. He says, yeah. you "Come and get it in our store." Well, well of course you will. Yeah. Yesterday, listen, listen. Oh, you know what? I'm not. If you speak to the vet, you tell the vet. Listen, I spoke to Warren. He said the food you want to recommend is fine, but he's recommending a different food. Is it really important I stick to yours, okay? So give me a call back okay. in a couple of weeks. If he agrees, we'll send you some Lucy food, and I appreciate that phone call. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA. Here's the difference, okay, folks? Over the years, over the years, I've had the opportunity of working literally with hundreds and hundreds of vets. And we always have agreements and disagreements. I'm a behaviorist. I'm not a veterinarian. They're veterinarians, they're not behaviors, but sometimes it goes hand in hand. And in terms of changing diet, in some cases, that's critical from a behavioral standpoint. If the dog is missing certain nutrients or, or not eating enough or whatever. But very often, a change in behavior is either due to a physiological reason or a psychological reason. I suggest that the dog get a clean bill of health from the vet, which he did. However, it kind of concerns me that the only thing the vet recommended to Don to get the dog back to normal was change the diet. There's got to be some behavioral work involved. The dog is not only reacting that way because of diet, that may have been because of the diet in the beginning, but now the psychological effects are taking place. That's why it's so important that vets work with behaviorists and behaviorists work with veterinarians. Hand in hand, they can make your pets so much better. Hey, the phone number here on the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Let me take a quick break. When I come back, i got Janet, Marlene, Diana, James, and Tracy. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. Should we get word of the word punishment? from dog training and behavior. Give me a call. Let me know. Everyone who calls in and gets to me live will get a great gift. Now, anybody want to tickle a cow? I've tickled a few cows in my career. Hey, we're back on the Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. Phone number 866-870-KRLA. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. We're going to get to all of you, I promise. We'll get to you, Janet, Marlene, Diana, James, and Tracy. Right now, we are going to... Uh, we're going to go to James in your Belinda. Hey, James, welcome to the show. Hello, uh, we have a, a 14 and a half year old uh, puggle. And the last, for at least a year now, he started uh, getting us up in the middle of the night. He won't sleep through the night. He has to go out. And uh, we've talked to the vet, and the vet says his prostate's okay, but he keeps getting us up real early. 
All right, let me go over a couple. Let me go over a couple of things with you, okay? You have a 14-year-old pugo. By the way, is there a cuter dog than a pugo? Come on now, James. Now you have a 14-year-old pugo, okay? Let's take yes. into consideration and let's compare your pugo to a 70-year-old man, right? Used to be able to sleep through the night, but now he's got to get up a couple of times during the night. Even though the dog's prostate is fine, he's a 14-year-old dog. Did the vet put him on any medication at all, James? No, he didn't. Okay. What time do you go to sleep at night? We put him down at 9 o'clock, and then we go to bed. So you go to sleep at 9 o'clock, and what time do you normally want to get up? Uh, 5.30. Okay, so you're, you go to sleep at 9 o'clock, you party animal, James, and you're a Linda. Listen to me carefully, okay? 9 o'clock till 5.30 is a long span of time for a 14-year-old dog. What time does the dog get his last water at night? Oh. Uh, Probably about 7 o'clock. Okay, well, first of all, that seems, you know, that doesn't really seem fair. If the dog seems thirsty after that, you can let him lick on an ice cube a little bit. The only way that you're going to stop this behavior, because everything is fine, so the dog just has the urge to go, is to walk him a little bit later. I know that's not what you want to hear. Walk him a little bit later, uh, because if you don't walk him, is he peeing in the house if you don't walk him, uh, James? Yes. Okay, so in other words, he has to go. He's not doing it. You had him for 14 years, and for 13 of those 14 years, he was the perfect dog, never peed in the house, and, and we love him in a dorm. We still love him in a dorm, but he's 14 years old now. He's going to have the occasional accidents. You say you put him down. Where do you put him down at night when you go to sleep? Well, he's got his own room. He, he does sleep in a crate. Okay, now he sleeps in the crate, and it sounds to me like when he's in the crate. Does he ever pee in the crate? Yes, he has. Okay, so in other words, he doesn't have the control. For a dog, my heart breaks for him. For a dog to pee in the crate, he doesn't have the control. I'm going to recommend, if you can, try to get him out a little bit later in the evening. Give him a little ice to lick before you go to sleep. And quite honestly, and I know people are going to correct me for this, having lived with so many geriatric dogs. I mean, I've adopted dogs 16, 17 years old. And yeah, they get up in the middle of the night. And yeah, it's a pain in the butt. You, I have to get up at that 3 or 4 in the morning and take them out for a walk. I, I would carry Cisco out every night. And that's just, just sometimes the price you have to pay for a dog that loves you that much and vice versa. I would try walking him a little bit later, but I would also consider speaking to another veterinarian, getting a second opinion, and see if there's nothing medically that they can give the dog to help him get through the night as well. I wish I had a better answer for you, but a 14-year-old dog has got a health bill from the vet, so he seems fine according to the vet. I would go a little bit further. I would try to get him out a little bit later in the evening. The other thing you might want to try to do is leave the crate door open and surround the area a little bit of away from the crate with some of those pads. You may be able to get him to use the pads at night at 14, and this way he won't be destroying your floor. That's my recommendation, James. I'm going to put you on hold. Uh, James, we are going to send you for your dog. God, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to send you some hemp seed uh, a calming oil uh, uh, for your dog. And a great call, by the way. And I love my listeners that have a you know, 14 or 15-year-old dog, but sometimes when we start out with a puppy or we adopt a younger dog and they get older, we forget that they're older because we kind of remember them as, as puppies. It's kind of like I never remember my grandfather getting older. He was always my grandfather. Uh, so, so it's the same thing. So when you have an older dog and, and they're going to have the accidents, you know, I'll tell you what my mother did. She walked around the house with a, with a mop and a bucket when her dog got older. He deserved that from her. So in your case, I would get a second opinion from an internist at this point. But in the meantime, I would get the dog out a little bit later in the evening. I would also put some pads outside of the crate. So if he does have to go, he can go outside of the crate on the pad and doesn't have to embarrass himself or feel bad by actually peeing on himself in the crate. Great call, by the way. I appreciate it. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. we got plenty of time to talk to each other. Call the hour and 10 minutes. Got to take a quick break. When we come back, Janet, Marlene, Diana, Tracy, just a reminder that everyone that calls in will get a great gift. I still got hugs and kisses to give away. I got Lucy Pet Food to give away. I got T-shirts to give away, books, Cat's Incredible Litter, Mushroom Max, Hemp Seed Oil, and Authors of Gold. Everyone that calls and gets through to me will get a live gift for their dog or cat. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. 
866-870-5752. Coming up, our Chihuahuas Good Swimmers. I'm Warren Eckstein. You're listening to The Pet Show. And we are back on The Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. Great time to give me a call. we got a whole other hour to go. Let me just give everyone a reminder. I know sometimes it's difficult to get through. When I go to my commercial break at the top of the hour, that's a good time to start calling the show, and we'll try to get you up because we've got a whole other hour to go, and i still got lots of great stuff to give away. So jot this number down, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752, I'm going to go to Janet Marlene. Hang in there to the next hour. Just going to break for five minutes. I want to answer your question about your daughter and the type of dog for her. Same thing with you, Tracy, in Thousand Oaks. But right now, let's go to my friend Janet in Lake Balboa. Hey, Janet, welcome to the show. Hi, Warren. Um, I'm a longtime listener, and I appreciate your show. Well, thank you. My nine-year-old cat, Coco, is a long-haired American curl. And lately, not lately, actually, this has been going on for a little while. She, I notice little little dingleberries, little poops um, around the house. I clean her box religiously. She has very long hair, so I don't know whether she's actually pooping out of the box or it's attaching to her fur, and then it, she, she drags it. It's dry, but I get these little dingleberries all around the house. Yeah, but you've got to find out what, what's causing it for me. You have, to, you have to either video it or you have to... You know, it, it's, I'd like to find out if she's going outside the box or not going outside the box. How old the cat did you say she was, Janet? She's nine. Nine years old, so she's in pretty good health, I'm assuming? Yes. And did this start recently? Is this something been going on for a while? It's been going on for probably a year. And when I took her to the vet for other issues, I'd have them shave the back, and then it didn't seem to happen as much. And um, so we, we try to cut the fur on the back, of, you know, by around her butt. And I don't see her... I don't see her stooping and pooping, but I'll I'll come out and there's there it is. I'll but is, is she in other words in the litter in the litter box when she uses the litter box is she still is the poop look normal in the litter box? Yes, it looks the same. How many litter boxes do you have? I have one. Let's get a second litter box enclosed. Okay. Let's get it, and I'm going to send you a different litter as well, okay? We're going to send you, I want you to get a, an enclosed litter box. It may be the litter that you're using, uh, but also, you know, there are certain cats with long hair, and it's just going to stick to their butt. There's nothing you can do about it, right, uh, except right. keep it shaved. But I think the litter is going to make a big difference for you. So let me do this, and give me a call back in a few weeks. I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm going to send you the most incredible litter on the market, of course. It's called Lucy Pets Cats Incredible Cat Litter. Let me tell you, the reaction from my listeners is amazing. There's not another litter like it on the market. I'll talk about it a little bit later um, but that's probably the reason there are certain cats and dogs that have you know a, a lot of hair around that anal area and sometimes when they eliminate it's going to stick there we're going to break for the top of the hour just for a minute or two take my word for it if you have a question or a comment about your pet or you just want to answer my question about punishment give me a call the phone number 866-870-KRLA 866-870-5752 or you can watch me or even ask me a question live on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash The Pet Show. Facebook.com slash The Pet Show. Again, the phone number is here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. 866-870-KRLA. I'm Warren Eckstein, and you're listening to The Pet Show. Warren Eckstein, the man for your pet. We try to stump them, but we haven't yet. Dog is barking, your cat missed the fox. Your ferret's chewed up all your favorite socks. You should know how to get inside your pet's head. But maybe it's you who needs to be trained instead. And if you love animals, care about wildlife and the environment and really want to understand, I mean really want to understand how your dogs think, how your cats think, why they behave the way they do, jumping, humping, digging, missing a litter box, scratching your favorite chair, keeping you up at night. If you have a question about your pet, you have come to the right place. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is The Pet Show, the first and only real pet psychology training behavior and pet lifestyle show. So if you have a question 
or a comment about your pet, just want to share a great story about them, great time to give me a call. A reminder to all of my listeners out there, new or regular, everyone that calls into the pet show and gets through to me live will in fact be getting an incredible gift. Don't get excited. It's not for you. An incredible gift for your dog or cat. Many of the items I give away, $25, $35, $40 and more. So it's a great time to give me a call. I'll answer your question or if you just want to brag about your pet. And at the same time, a great gift will be on its way. And I got some of those amazing t-shirts that say none of my friends walk upright available today as well. The phone number here at the pet show, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752, That is the way to get through. Or if you'd like to ask a question on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash the pet show, facebook.com uh, slash the pet show. And the question today is kind of interesting. You know, I talked about punishment. I hate that word punishment. But do you believe in punishment? There's a lot of trainers and behaviors out there that say if the dog's not doing this, you got to jerk it, you got to do this. Do you believe in punishment when you're training your pet? Give me a call. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Send you a great gift at the same time. Also want to find out how you guys are coping during the COVID-19 quarantine with your dogs and your cats. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5750. Five, two. Also coming up in just a little bit, we're going to take a look at whether or not, whether or not, I'm just visualizing it, whether or not chihuahuas are good swimmers. Anyone out there have a swimming chihuahua? Give me a call. Anyone out there with a swimming chihuahua? Are chihuahuas good swimmers? Uh, it's kind of an interesting story. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Also coming up, if we have time, did you know, did you know that behavioral problems are the number one reason dogs are surrendered to shelters and killed? I'll talk about some of the reasons of that, that coming up. But most importantly, your questions and your comments, 866-870-5752, 866-870-KRLA. That is the way to get through. You know, years ago, I was involved with a group called uh, Getting Dogs on the Beach uh, here in Santa Monica, opening up a, a beach for dogs in Santa Monica. Now, the beaches are kind of pretty empty during the week. Don't you think it would be a great idea for people to have one beach, one specific beach where they can walk their dog or take their dog and, and get some exercise and get out a little bit? Just one place specifically for dog guardians as long as they maintain that proper social distancing as well. Give me a call. Let me know what you think. 866 870 KRLA, the phone number. Right now, we're going to Tracy in uh, in Thousand Oaks. Hey, Tracy, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm doing super. What's up? Good. I wanted to ask about the CBD and the enzymes because I had a friend of mine whose um, cat, she was 14 years old, and just she's just devastated. A couple of weeks ago, she had to put, um, put her cat down. She lost her appetite. They took, him to the, they took her to the vet, and the vet took the blood work, and Everything seemed to be fine. Her thyroid was a little bit off, but, you know, she lost her appetite. And I was just kind of curious because I've heard and I've kind of read about that, that CBD and maybe enzymes would help with, like, maybe loss of appetite. Is that something that Yeah, but, it's, you know, rather, rather than the CBD, you know, there's a difference between CBD and hemp seed oil. You know, hemp seed oil contains no THC at all. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'm going to try to I'm going to send you some hemp seed uh, calming oil specifically made for uh, appetite and digestion, and it might be beneficial. The, the results from hemp seed oil are amazing, and I talk about this all the time. You know, I have rheumatoid arthritis, so I've been using hemp seed oil uh, for many, many, many years, and it really does make a difference. But the only hemp seed oil I recommend. And it's not just because they're a sponsor, because I know how it's made right here in Temecula, California. I don't know about the other ones. Uh, is Nature Vet? So I'm going to send you some of that that hemp seed oil made by Nature Vet uh, for the uh, for the digestion. I hope that makes a difference. What kind of dog did you say it was? Oh, okay. you said the, you said the cat passed away. Yeah, the cat was, yeah, her cat had passed. She had yeah. to put it yeah, well, yeah, yeah, so might, yeah, so I, yeah, so I guess. She does have another cat. So oh, okay, I good. I thought I maybe, that would be some maybe a gift that she might like for her other cat. I think, I think it's, I think it's a great idea. I'm going to send you some or get on its, on its way to take a little bit longer than normal based on the fact that it's COVID time. But anyway, what a nice friend you are. Don't you have any pace of your own, Tracy? Well, I did and I will. Um, as soon as I settle down in a place, I'm definitely, um, I'm thinking about being a foster mom and then probably will be getting some. <laughs> now, are you going to be, are you going to be a real foster mom? Or are you going to be one of those failure foster moms? <laughs> I know so well. Probably what, well. I will be a. I, I want to be a good one, and I, I know I will end up probably adopting. So. 
Well, you know, you could be, you could, you could do like the way I did it. I, I was fostering for a while, and I wound up with thirty six dogs, <laughs> and none of, none of them, none of them ever went to another home. They all lived with Warren until they crossed the Rainbow Bridge, and that doesn't, that doesn't include the cats and and the pigs and the chickens and the ducks that I rescued as well. Anyway, it's a, I'm so glad you have a friend like that. Anyway, I'm going to send that to your friend. What a great friend you are. Some of that hemp seed oil on its way. Great call. I really do appreciate it. So I'm put you on hold. Thank you. Thank you. Put you on hold and the lovely Suzette will pick up. Hey, great time to give me a call, by the way, if you have a question or a comment. I still got some uh, uh, Lucy Petru to give away and some hugs and kisses to give away uh, and hemp seed oil. You just heard me give some of that away. The phone number is 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. If you'd like to answer this question, I'll send you a gift as well. Would you let your husband or wife drink black coffee if you were out of milk, but run to the store if your pet needed treats? Give me a call. I'll send you a great gift. 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get to it. Marlene Nancy will get to you in just a second, I promise. I just wanted to share this with, uh, with some cat guardians out because this is really important information. Uh, you know, dandruff may be a cosmetic inconvenience that many people dread, but cats can suffer from this condition as well. The cause of dandruff in cats can range from relatively simple things such as obesity that limits a cat's ability to groom, allergies, or the buildup of the undercoat, to more serious issues such as fleas, a skin infection, to very serious issues such as cancer like cutaneous lymphoma. There's also a condition called walking dandruff. This is a mite usually prevented by flea control products. There are many other potential causes of dandruff as well, but if you have a cat with excessive dandruff, it may not just be an annoyance. It may be something you want to speak to your veterinarian about because also uh, it could mean something like fungal infections, malnutrition, as I said, inability to groom, kidney disease, so something you definitely want to check out with your veterinarian. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. I am going to beautiful Woodland Hills. Marlene, welcome to the show. I'm calling because I just need some advice. My daughter wants to get a dog. So you're going to be so you're going to be a grandma. I well, I already am, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll be a grandma. But I'm going to be a mommy again soon. I I lost my baby, and oh, I can't even talk about it. Oh, right so now, but, sorry. You're yeah. Right so she wants to get a Wheaton Terrier, which she's always wanted a Wheaton, and I know they're wonderful dogs. I'm sure they're wonderful. But I've never had one. I've always had Schnauzers, but. I'm just, I'm just concerned. She wants to get a puppy, um, and there, uh, she has, she lives in an apartment, and she lives in Santa Monica, by the way. So hopefully we will get that beach room done. <laughs> Thank but you. I'm just concerned that Wheatons are going to be so hyperactive. That's my concern. But she's done a lot of research, and also I wanted to ask you about the difference in the gender. If you would suggest a female as opposed to a male, she's How not many, how many kids does she have? No, she doesn't have any children. Oh, she doesn't have any kids. No. Oh, no yeah. So. so let me ask you a question. Does she work? Yes. She works, but she's home now because of the COVID thing. Okay, but why Why a puppy? Marlene, why a puppy? Why not consider okay. adopting something six months old, a year old, or even a year and a half old? I agree, because I, I try to tell her it's a lot of work with a puppy. Not only the work aspect, I'm assuming she's a single person. She's yeah. going to be dating sooner or later, right, Mom? You're looking for that? <laughs> she's going to be dating sooner or later, and if she starts dating, she's going to be out a lot. And, and sometimes yeah. sometimes the best way to approach it is if you can adopt a dog that's a little bit older, maybe they're already housebroken, they've already gone through their juvenile delinquent right. stages. So that would be my recommendation. In terms of the breed, you could not choose a better breed. A good old Irish soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, an amazing breed of dog. Little socializing, a little training will be the greatest dog she ever had. Great around kids, great around people, as long as she takes the time to socialize it. One of the things oh. I would recommend that she does, if she's uh -huh. willing to adopt a little bit older, and sometimes they have puppies as well, is to go to uh, Wheaton Terrier Rescue. I believe there's a Wheaton Terrier Rescue right here in Southern California. If not, I I'm sure. Go ahead. I think she's done that, but you can't find them. That they're just all of them in the Midwest. I agree with you. I think that'd be wonderful for her to do because she's home now, but 
she, you know, she when she's when the school starts again. Yeah. It's probably six months from. Let's say she'll be home for six months. Yeah. No, listen. Goes. If she really, if she really wants wants the puppy, that's her option. But if she can't find it with the local Southern California uh, Wheaton, maybe go to Northern California, Central California, Arizona. I'm sure she can find a Wheaton. I mean, I see them pop up on rescues all the time. I'm sure mm-hmm. she can find. If she does want a puppy, that's her option, and I understand that. However, with the number of dogs being euthanized in this country every year, uh-huh. uh, I would definitely recommend that she adopt something older. The other thing she may want to try is to contact the Soft Coated Wheaton Terrier Club of America. If she contacts oh, the Soft Wheaton Terrier Club of America, she'll find it online, they will have a national rescue organization probably listed there and also some more local rescues. That would be my recommendation for her. That's a great idea because honestly, I don't think she realizes what she's going to get into having a baby, a puppy, because yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. It's having a child. It's a well, it, is, it is. And you know, if, if she was someone that was kind of older and going to be in the home all the time, but you know, listen, she lives in Santa Monica. She, I know Santa Monica pretty well. I, I live there too. She's going to be wanting to go out. She's going to be wanting to date, meeting friends here, meeting friends there. And hopefully she can take the puppy or dog with her. But at the same time, I think, I really think the best choice for her would be something in that, that six month to a year, year and a half old range. Okay. Okay. They, what, but they already have their personalities developed and you know, I mean. Do you Let me ask you a question. I'm assuming, were you married? Are you married? Yes. Your husband already had his personality when he got married, too, didn't he? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm not going there, Molly. I'm not even going. But I'm just saying it's fine if the dog has his personality. Listen, I adopted yeah. two dogs. Last year, I adopted two dogs, a brother and sister, from a shelter, yeah. a high-kill shelter. God knows what these poor dogs had gone through prior to me. I'm still working out yeah. some issues with them. So the bottom line is, even if they have little things in their personality, I'm here for you. So what I'm going to do, Marlene, I'm putting you on hold, and I am sending you, Grandma, a copy of how to get your dog to do what you want, and um, uh, give it to your daughter, let her read it, and if she has any questions before making the decision, Marlene, always feel free to have her give me a call. I'll try to guide her a little bit further, but adoption is definitely the way to go. Hey, the phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-870. KRLA 866-870-5752. Denise, you know, Denise should be with me at the studio. She hands me these notes, the lovely Denise, my wife. Uh, You can also check out SoCalWheaton.org. That's SoCalWheaton.org, an organization here that might be able to guide you as well. Uh, Let me do this. Uh, Let me take a quick break, then right back to your phone calls. Nancy, Rick, Peter, Lisa, quick break, then right back at you. You know, ah, oh, way too much monkey business. So here's the question, guys. I'll get right to you, Nancy, Rick, Peter, and Lisa. Are chihuahuas good swimmers? I know it keeps you up at night thinking about this, but it does me. Chihuahuas, in fact, have an appropriate physical confirmation to be able to swim and that they generally have a long enough nose despite their short sometimes faces. Now listen carefully. They are finely built enough to be buoyant and have proportionately long enough legs to be able to swim. However, however, chihuahuas cannot be said to be good swimmers, partially because their heads, their heads are very large compared to the rest of them, which tends to tip them forward to a degree and mean their necks are under pressure after a couple of minutes in the water. So they have big heads. Chihuahuas have big heads, but they can swim. They can swim. 866-870-K, I want the phone number. I just see him going like that. 866-870-5752. Hey, just a reminder, those t-shirts I told you about, the None of My Friends Walk Upright t-shirts, they're available on my website, thepetshow.com. Thanks to you, my listeners, not only in Los Angeles, but all across the U.S. and Canada for my national show. We've raised a few dollars now, and we're able to send money out to so many small mom-and-pop organizations that would never see a dime from anyone else. And thanks to you for doing that. If you want to get more information and you'd like to get one of the T-shirts that say, None of My Friends Walk Upright, they're now available in black, available in red, and for the summer, available in white. Just go to my website, thepetshow.com thepetshow.com and what you pay for the t-shirt goes directly to help those animals out there that never would have received any help in the past uh, let me get right back to the phones when we get to you Rick, Peter and Lisa phone number 866-870-KRLA right now it's Nancy hey Nancy welcome to the pet show 
Well, thank you for taking my call. Um, we are dealing with a 12 and a half year old black Labrador, and we are definitely at the end of his life. And I don't know what to do. Forgive me. That's okay. I'm right there with you. My eyes are just as wet as yours. So two weeks ago, um, he was diagnosed with pancreatitis and was, you know, that panting constantly, so immediately yeah. took him in. And when we got there, he was diagnosed, and then we put him on the regiment with the gastro uh, type of medication along with the antibiotics. And he has dysplasia, and his back feet are kind of rolling in, his, you know, his foot kind of going in. So we were kind of, he was lethargic and kind of was really struggling. So um, we talked to the vet again, and they suggested we do steroids. So the dog's been uh, on steroids for like four days now, and I don't know what to do because I feel like it's almost like the end of the life of a person. Well, how's, his, we how's, his health other than, how's his health other than his legs? And, and, I mean, is he, is he happy? No. He's, I, do, I, I think that he's uh, tired because, you know, that medication, that steroid causes that constant panting and thirst, and he just, like, starts eating yesterday. And you, I don't know. Have you mentioned to your vet laser therapy, cold laser therapy? I don't know what that is. Okay. Basically, laser therapy, it's, it's a handheld device. It's non-invasive. It's non-painful. I used it with my shepherd, Skylar, before he passed away. They told me he wouldn't be walking. It's time to put him to sleep. And five years later, after laser therapy, he had an incredible life. So something you might want to speak to your vet about. If you go to my website, thepetshow.com, there's a great article there specifically on laser therapy. It's quick. It's painless. You might want to speak to your vet about that, okay? Okay. Uh, may make a difference. The other thing I'm going to suggest to you, and you know, it's a 12-year-old lab, but I've seen labs 14, 15, and even 16 occasionally. If we can get the dog feeling a little bit better, one of my friends, Pam Show, just sent me an email. Uh, Good afternoon. Just got back from the holistic vet. Uh, the dog had, her dog had acupuncture and some laser treatment. That's how important that is. So you might want to consider cold laser therapy. You also might want to consider uh, 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 therapy, like well, not physical therapy, but that type of therapy for the dog as well. There's hydrotherapy, there's acupuncture, there's acupressure. This dog's given you 12 incredible years, so the best thing we can do at this point is to keep him as, as pain-free and to give him whatever time he has left uh, without the pain uh, and keep him just as happy as we possibly can. And I think it's worth definitely a shot, worth talking to your vet about, but I've seen great results with the uh, the cold laser therapy, so it's something you might want to chat to your, your vet about. Okay. In the meantime, okay. I'm going to send you I'm going to send you a product uh, called Arthrosu Gold, uh, made by my friends at NatureVet. It's really a great product for dogs with hip problems as well. But the other thing that's really important, and, and, and Nancy, I'm saying this from my heart to your heart, when you have a dog and it's 12, 13 years old and it's one of those breeds that, you know, doesn't live to be 100 years old, uh, sit down. I mean, now you're going to make me cry, Nancy. Sit down. And this is what I did with Cisco. Just sit down and, and talk to him. And, and what's the dog's name? Bowden. And I would say Bowden, listen. We've had this incredible time together, 12 years. If you're ready, let me know. If you're in pain, let me know. Don't take anyone else's opinion. It's the dog that's going to let you know. So the eyes are the mirror to the soul. Look in the eyes. He'll let you know. In the meantime, I'm hoping that the, the laser therapy in conjunction with other, some other therapies might make a difference for you. But have that conversation. Really, not only is the conversation good for you, but it just kind of lets Bowden know the, the deepness and depth of, of the love that you have for them. And it's, it's so hard to say goodbye, but we just want to make sure whatever time we have them, we want to make it the quality of time or the best right. quality of time we can. Right. Okay, hey, I'm Nancy, will you give him a big hug and a kiss for me? I will. That's I'm lots of them. Yeah, play, I play, yeah, don't listen. Tell his head is full of your lipstick. You haven't done enough. I'm going to put you on hold. <laughs> the lovely Suzette's going to pick up. Now you got me in tears here. The lovely Suzette's going to pick up, and uh, we're going to send you some authors of gold, and I really, really do appreciate that phone call. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Rick, you're going to be up next, and followed by Peter and followed by Lisa. I'm going to get to your calls. you still got plenty of time to call me. The phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA, 866 
5752. I got to thank you guys. We have been so busy this week. You know, I wrote my autobiography uh, a while back, but I never did a, a live voiceover or reading of it, which I'm doing now. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, it's youtube.com slash Warren Eckstein, or, or you can find it on some of my Facebook. I just posted some, some short inserts from the uh, uh, from the the memoirs of a book, and, and I think this last one was uh, I was involved with with rescuing. You know what? Let me do this. Let me take a break now. Come back and tell you the story I posted and, and how it's part of the autobiography. The phone number here eight uh, eight six six eight seventy K R L A eight six six eight seven zero five seven five two. Hey, you know, and we are back on the pet show on Warren next time. And this is something I put together a while back. Some new crossbreed dogs. What would you call a crossbreed between a, a cross between a pointer and a setter? Perfect for the holidays would be called a point setter. A uh, a Pekingese and a Lhasa would be called a Picasso, an abstract dog. Uh, um, what's some of the other ones? Uh, uh, a terrier and a bulldog called a terrible, a dog that makes awful mistakes. And uh, uh, this is the, the uh, a bull terrier and a Shih Tzu. I'm not gonna. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not saying it on the air, Alex. It's a bulldog and a shih tzu. Call it whatever you want. A she bull. I don't care. 866-870-KRLA. The phone number 866-870-575. Alex had his, Alex had his finger on the, the delete button right there. Uh, let me get back to the phones right now. Let me go to Rick and Azusa. Hey, Rick. Welcome back to the Pet Show. Hey, I appreciate uh, you taking my call. Hey, it's my pleasure, Rick. What's up? Listen, I've got a couple dogs that have really horrendous breath. Um, I take them into the vet at least once a year to get their teeth clean. Uh, and it, uh, it works for a while, but then at, at um, you know, maybe two months and, and then uh, it's back uh, bad again. Well, if, you're getting the teeth cleaned on a, if you're getting the teeth cleaned on a regular basis and you have them cleaned and two months later the, the, the bad breath is back again, uh, there could be another reason for it. Maybe the diet you're feeding them is not the right diet for them. And sometimes what happens is, you know, yeah, bad breath can be caused by bad teeth and, and gums. And we know that, that 85 to 90% of dogs will develop some type of dental or periodontal disease by the time they're three or four years old. But the fact that you're getting the teeth cleaned and the fact that the right. bad breath is coming back so rapidly, it could be due to a couple of different things. Number one, you may want to consider changing the diet to a much more digestible diet. Now, I'm not going to send you Lucy Pet Food. Uh, yeah, I will, but I want you. I want to show. I'm going to talk about something different. I started my dogs. This is something you can get from your vet. Although maybe I think it's available online. It does other Chewy as well. It's called Aura Vet. It's O R A V E T. Aura Vet. And it comes in different si I mean, it's one size package, but it comes in different sizes for different dogs. For example, I have one for dogs up to 10 pounds. There's 10 to 24 pounds and larger. Now, this really helps prevent bacterial attachment, plaque calculus, and really helps get rid of bad breath. It took the bad breath immediately away from my dog, Willie. So I want you to ask your vet or go online to, to Chewy, Amazon. I'm sure they both have it. It's called Aura Vet, and they're not a sponsor on the show, so I'm not promoting them other than the fact I use them for my own dog. See, that in conjunction with a good brushing on your part once in a while should make a major, major difference for you. O-R-A-V-E-T. I hope that helps you out a bit there, Rick. Fantastic. Yeah, I've changed their food once already, uh, but it didn't seem to work. So. Well, we're yeah, going to change. Well, you know what? I'm going to do I'm going to do it. Listen, don't go anywhere. I'm going to do a commercial in just a few seconds for Lucy Pet Food. But in the meantime, I want you to listen to commercial because I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm actually going to send you some Lucy Pet Formers for Life Pet Food for your pet. Because if your dog or cat is digesting their food properly, their breath is going to be so much better. That's number one. And as I said, this Oravet, well, I have no, uh, no relationship with other than I use it on my own pets, has made an incredible difference, not only in preventing tooth decay and other problems, but making the breath so much better at the same time. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Peter Long Beach, welcome to the Pet Show. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you for taking my phone call. Hey, it's I my pleasure. What's that. up, Peter? Yes. Well, my wife and I accepted a cat. It just came in our yard one day, and we, we took it to the vet. We found out that it's one of these uh, rescue and release cats. 
And uh, it's a long-haired cat. We love it, but it's shedding its hair, and it's eating its hair, and I guess um, it's, you know, throwing up these uh, hairballs. But yeah, well, can you... It. Peter, can you touch the cat? Yeah, we we can pet the cat, but we can't brush it. That's okay. What I'd like it, what I'd like you to try to do, okay. Number one, I'd like you to take a moist washcloth and see if you can just rub it over the cat quickly. That's number one. Number two, is it a cat? Is, is it an indoor cat? I hope. Uh, indoor, yes. Okay. What I would do is you can get them online, but they sell these long, it looks like, oh, kind of looks like a broom handle, but it has a brush on the other side specifically made for cats or dogs. You can put that on a wall. It just sits alongside a wall, and when your cat goes up against it, it actually brushes the cat, and they actually start to learn to enjoy being brushed, okay? So that's one approach. But what I'm going to tell you next is probably the most important thing there is. I am going to send you a jar of my own Hugs and Kisses Vitamin Mineral Supplement Treats for Cats. And the reason I'm sending it to you is the number one ingredient is all natural lecithin. There is nothing better for shedding, dander, dry skin, and improving the immune system than Hugs and Kisses. That's why they've been around for over 35 years and have my signature and my face on the label. So number one, try a damp washcloth to get some of the hair off. Number two, look online. I'm sure you can find one of those brushes that goes to the wall, and this way the cat can brush right. herself when she walks against it. And at the same time, the hugs and kisses will be on its way. All three of those put together, uh, and a good diet for the dog will make all the difference in the world. Thank you. Thank you so very much. So I appreciate good, that. Sir. Uh, listen, it's my, I appreciate you and your wife taking the cat. I'm going to put you on hold, and I am going to send you. What did I say I was going to send? I'm going to send you some hugs and kisses for your cat on its way. Check out Lucy Pet Food as well. I think that's going to help make a difference also. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Quick break, then right back at you. Great time to call me. And we're back on the Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. Get to the phones in just a second. Lisa, Don, don't go anywhere. You know, that behavioral issues and problems are the number one reasons dogs wind up at shelters and euthanized. I spent the majority of my career at shelters and rescues up and down the entire East Coast and the Midwest and even on the West Coast, working with dogs that were, were judged uh, unacceptable, that should be put to sleep. They were evaluated by rubber hands being stuck in a cage or, or people making all kinds of things. And when I evaluated these dogs, I explained to the people at the shelter, the rescues, and the potential guardians that these problems can be resolved. These are the five basic reasons why dogs wind up at shelters. Number one, inappropriate chewing. Number two, digging in the yard. Number three, drives me crazy, begging at the table, barking at the door, or not housebroken. Every one of those, an easy problem to resolve. Yet, how many tens of thousands of dogs and cats are killed at shelters every year because they're not evaluated properly by people with the right knowledge? There are some great people out there that can evaluate dogs, but again, how many thousands of dogs and cats are killed every year based on being misdiagnosed when they're at a shelter or based on being turned in for a situation or behavioral issue that can easily, easily be resolved. Makes me crazy. You don't turn them in, you resolve the issue. You don't bring your dog or cat and say kill him because he has a behavioral issue. You resolve that behavioral issue. That's why I'm here and that's why literally there are thousands of amazing trainers and behaviorists all across the U.S. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Let me go to Lisa. Hey, Lisa, welcome to the show. Hi, Warren. How are you? I'm doing super. How about you? I'd like to get out of my house a little bit more, but other than that, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> I perfectly understand. I have a question regarding our two-year-old. He is an Amstaff boxer mix. So what, a great a what a great combination. Oh, he is. He's a great dog. His name is Moose. But um, he has started just recently. He's a sidewalk curb walker. But recently he has started walking, like crossing in front of me with her walking. He'll just all of a sudden, you know, turn right and walk in front of me or turn left. 
and I've tried to keep him on the left side to keep him off the street side, but he continues to just recently. Cross do you know? Do you know why dogs were taught to walk on the left side? And why all trainers teach dogs to walk on the left side? No, I have no idea. Okay, dogs were originally trained by the Roman emperors. They were trained for war. Most men, being right-handed, would have their weapon in their right hand. Therefore, oh. the dogs of war would be taught to walk on the left side. Now, in terms of your scenario, easy problem to resolve, but just be careful. What I'd like you okay. to do is take the dog to an area where you have plenty of room to walk with him on the leash and make no right turns. Make no right turn? Just keep turning to the left. Walk in a square, okay. keep turning to the left. If he tries to cross you, you can bump him a little bit with your knee. But all, in other words, keep the leash short enough at this point where he's not going to cross in front of you. But what happens is if you keep turning to the left, he'll learn that that heel command means to stay in that position at your left side. It's safer for you okay. and it's safer for the dog. Now, does the dog have to heal all the time? No, that's boring. If I take my dog for a walk, it's not my walk, it's his. I don't care if he smells to the right or if he smells to the left as long as it's safe. But the first thing you need to do is teach him to walk properly, then you can say, okay, now you can go ahead. What I'm going to do, it's such an easy thing to do, it's an about face, it's easy to do. What I'm going to do is, in your case, Lisa, this should not take, if I were to come to your house in La Cañada right now, by the way, I used to call it La Canada when I moved from New York, but La <laughs> Cañada right now, I guarantee you, and it's not my ego, I guarantee you that within seven minutes, I would have your dog reacting perfectly. But you know what? That does you no good. You have to do it. So, Lisa, I'm going to put you on hold. I'm sending you a copy of how to get your dog to do what you want. Follow the chapter on healing. You'll be happier, and your dog will be happier as well. We come back. I got an interesting comment from Becky Ann on my, uh, on my Facebook post. We'll try to get to Ron, uh, Don as well. A uh, great time to call me. I'm also going to get, oh, write this number down. This is the number for my national show. It starts as soon as I get off the air here at 1 o'clock goes through all hundreds of cities around the country and Canada. Write this number down. You'll be the first ones calling at 1 o'clock. I answer the same questions, give away the same prizes. So if you're out driving around, shopping, whatever you're doing, write this number down. You can start calling at 1. 877-725-8255. 877-725-8255. And we're back on the Pet Show on more next time. Hey, Don, call the network show. And echoes for all of you out there listening and online. Write this number down. You can start calling it at 1 o'clock, 877-725-8255. Same type of show. I give away the same gifts. Start at 1 o'clock, 877-725-8255. Check out my YouTube channel. Lots of new stuff there, youtube.com slash the pet show. I got a, a text here from, uh, not a text, but on my Facebook page from Becky Ann saying, Warren, this week I had an issue with our vet who was upset by my questions. I had about a risky medication uh, he prescribed for my cat, and without explaining the risk, I learned uh, via research. So, in other words, if you go to a doctor, I don't care what doctor he is, your doctor, a veterinarian, I don't care what doctor he is, if he's prescribing a medication to you for your dog or your cat, and that veterinarian is not willing to go over the risks of that medication, it's time to change veterinarians. And if you really have a question about it, never hesitate to contact the Southern California Veterinary Medical Association. I cannot believe, and I'm so sorry it happened to you, Becky Ann, I cannot believe that a doctor prescribed them and I'm on a lot of medications for my rheumatoid arthritis and the one thing I always ask is what's side effects or what interactions can there be what can I eat like I just found out I can't have grapefruit with the medication that I take so the bottom line Becky Ann if he's not willing to take the time to explain to you about the risky medication and what some of the side effects are it's time to move on to a different doctor Take out the number, write it down. You can start calling right about now, 877-725-8255, 877-725-8255. Until next week, give all your pets a big hug and a kiss for you. One between the ears for me. I'm Warren Eckstein. You've been listening to The Pet Show. Hi, Warren Eckstein here. Thanks for visiting my YouTube channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you stay up to date on all my latest videos. Don't forget to tune into The Pet Show on Saturday and visit thepetshow.com for all the latest pet and animal news.